So we've been hearing that British travellers will be facing additional security measures, but are they sufficient? Joining us is Jim Tamini from Redline Aviation Security. Morning, Jim. Morning. Now, first of all, um, your job means that you travel around the world and look at security situations in various airports and work out whether or not they are efficient. Is that right? Uh, we do. Uh, we Personally, I don't have the, the luxury, really, of getting all the, the, the travel. But the team that we employ back at Doncaster, they, they do go all around the world and they will um, give training as directed by the, the host countries. And what is your assessment of security at Sharm el-Sheikh? Currently, um, it's obviously improving, an improving situation. I know that the UK government's got a team on the ground. They will have assessed what needs to be done to bring the security to the standards expected of any EU country. Uh, within the UK, we apply EU regulation where it comes to aviation security. Um, so they will be trying to get it to a standard commensurate with that. So what are the differences within between the, an EU standard and a standard elsewhere in the world? The EU standard typically is on a par with the US standard, and actually, if not, it's a little bit better. So where we see flights coming into the UK, or into the EU indeed, um, from anywhere outside, there can be additional measures applied, and that's down to each individual country to make that decision. So for countries outside of the EU, it's their national responsibility to decide what the threat is to their aviation industry, and it's their responsibility to apply the appropriate measures um, to secure the travelling public. Now, on this occasion, uh, the British government, and uh, we heard from the Prime Minister yesterday, they brought in short-term measures yeah. to make it safe to bring those people back. That yeah. does not answer the wider questions about long-term security. No. What it does do is it assures the safety of those people that are currently stuck in Egypt um, to bring them back as safely as we possibly can. Now. But it begs the question as to six weeks' time, in three months' time, in all the other airports that yeah. you've been alluding to, upon whom the spotlight has not been shone in the same way as Sharm el-Sheikh. I mean, people will be asking a lot of questions about places they go. Absolutely, and, and rightly so, and that's no bad thing, really, because if a national uh, industry such as tourism is threatened through security, that focuses that particular country's appropriate authority or their government into getting their security to a standard that gives the travelling public, gives the tourists comfort that the security is to the standard required. Can I ask you this, then? It was very interesting hearing uh, yesterday from the Egyptian Prime Minister, uh, President, uh, who was speaking to David yeah. Cameron, they clearly were under the impression their security measures were good enough. They were quoting uh, various changes that were made, I think, 10 months ago, and saying that yeah. the international community, including the British authorities, were happy then. Now, is there a complete disparity between what they think is OK and what, obviously, in this case, the British government thinks is OK? Yeah, aviation security typically operates on four different levels. At a national level, at an airport level, there are the policies that, that put the security into place. And to do that, we have procedures at the airport, and then underpinning the procedures, we have training and we have equipment. So, for example, where we've supported um, Egypt in training and in helping them with equipment, those two levels could be perfectly acceptable. But if the procedures in place that applies the training to support the national policies aren't adequate, and typically you'll find that that's supervision of officers, management of supervisors, if that's not to the standard that we expect, that can be where security falls over. Interesting. It's, you're not talking about technology, are you? You're talking about human contact. It's about the, the humans involved. Yeah. It's about good old-fashioned man management, making sure that the officers are doing what they're trained to do and operating the equipment as it's supposed to be operated. Jim, thank you very much indeed, Jim Tamini. Just a reminder as well, we'll be asking the Transport Secretary, Pac Patrick McLaughlin, about those security measures and about uh, bringing those people back to the UK. That's coming up a little later this morning. Before all that, let's go to Matt, who has this morning's weather.